add-on lenses to your phone? Is it a gimmick or are they really worthwhile having? You see, years ago when you only had the one lens on your phone, in fact some phones today still have only one lens on your phone, there was absolutely a need for it because you could do so much more with your phone camera by adding on a lens. You could add a telephoto lens, a wide angle lens, a fisheye lens or a macro lens and you've made your camera on your phone so much more versatile than what it was out of the box. But these days you can do so much with phones like the 13 Pro Max because it's got three cameras on there, the wide, the ultra wide and the telephoto lens. You've got so much functionality in that camera right now. So do you actually need these lenses? Do you know Reflex? They make that camera app. So these guys sent me a full set of these lenses and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk up Mount Hope and on the way, I'm going to use that Reflex camera app. Tell me if you know which photo was taken with the lens or without the lens and give me your honest opinion. Do lenses really have a place in today's mobile photography? Now for me, one of the most obvious reasons to have external lenses, especially the wide angle lens and the fisheye lenses, is mainly to take control of that aperture that you have on the wide angle lens. Now what I mean by that is that the wide angle lens on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and this is the same for all iPhone Pro models with the three lenses, is that the wide angle lens, so your regular camera lens, has a wider aperture. And what that means is it lets more light into that sensor than what the other two lenses do. So when I want to shoot something in the night sky, say the Milky Way, I want it to be nice and wide and open so I can get all those stars in the photo. But when I use the ultra wide lens on the iPhone, well, this is the sort of photo you get. But how do I get more of it in? Well, you can use a wide angle lens and you're gonna end up with these. So it's a way that we can get nice wide angle shots of the night sky with all the galactic core, all those stars in that photo, you're taking advantage of that wide open aperture lens that's on the regular wide camera. The field of view is just so much more, and all that was shot with reflex. Before I keep heading up, I've, there's some actual, there's some moss on the ground here. Now that's a good opportunity here to test that uh, macro functionality. I might use the 10 times macro lens from reflex, and I'll also shoot with the iPhone 13 Pro Max macro. See if you can tell the difference. Let's have a quick talk about these lenses here. So they've sent me six of them and they all come in this white box. So in this box, you're gonna get the lens. It's, you're also gonna get this uh, felt carry case, carry bag if you like. And um, so you get a lens cloth and you get this uh, felt bag that the lens goes into. But because they've sent me all six of these lenses, I've put them in a different carry case. So we've got here a macro 10 times zoom. We've got a long range macro and there is a difference and I'll explain when something presents itself here. We've also got a fisheye lens, fisheye pro lens, and we've also got a telephoto pro lens. This is a 60, 60 millimeter, I think it is. Is it 60 millimeter? Am I gonna be wrong? No, it is 60 millimeter. And we'll use that in a different way in a second. Um, there's two more lenses here. One is the wide angle lens, and one is the uh, anamorphic lens. But uh, any sort of uh, B-roll that you see in this video will be shot with this, uh, with Filmic Pro. So they're the lenses that we're going to use. They're all pretty bloody good. They're well built. Um, you know I've done a lot of stuff with Sandmark here before, and if I didn't know better, I'd say they've come out of the same place. Uh, the build quality on these is at least Sandmark quality. In fact, there's things on this here that I like better than I like with Sandmark, like the, the covers and stuff. They're, they're metal covers on some of these lenses. Um, it's really well built. I'm happy with the build quality of these. I wouldn't tell you that they're good if they weren't. As I get further up here, and I haven't been up to the top of Mount Hope for, for a few years, look how flat it is out there. Look how flat that countryside is. It's dead set flat. There's the car way down there. We're probably about a third of the way up. This isn't a, 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 a hill that you climb with tracks everywhere. Like there's no, there's no tracks here. You've got to kind of work out the best way to get up. Like, and now I've come to this point where there's no, yeah, there's, there's no obvious way up. So. I'm gonna go bush bashing, I think. You know, every time I shoot a video out here in the comments, I always, always get, are you worried about snakes? Of course I'm worried about bloody snakes. But most snakes will just, you know, nick off and not bother you at all. In fact, this morning it's a little bit cooler, so they're not really active yet. But um, most snakes are just as scared of you as what you are of them. Except for tiger snakes, those things are bastard things. They'll go after you. 
We're about two thirds of the way up the hill now. The wind's starting to pick up, so it might be a bit of muffle here. Um, the sun's just coming up, as you can probably see, just over the top of the hill. And right down there, I'm not sure if you can see that, but my car's down there. And I thought this would be a good spot here to test that telephoto lens that Reflex makes. So what I'll do, I'll take two photos, one with the native camera app on the, on the uh, telephoto lens, on the, what was it, three and a half time zoom, or two and a half, I can't remember, it's on an iPhone, it's bugger all. Um, and I'll take a photo of that, and then I'll put the telephoto lens onto the telephoto lens on the phone, so we're getting double the go. And I think it's going to work out pretty well. So here you can see I've got the telephoto lens from Reflex screwed into the telephoto lens on the camera itself. This is going, and I'm going to manually select that telephoto lens with the telephoto pro lens on it, and we'll see what we get. Now, how much closer does this look than the regular camera app? I think I've already given it away as to which one took which. Let's keep going. I'm almost up the top now. The wind's pretty bad up here. Sorry about that. The top's just here. I can see that um, the marker up the top there. We'll get there in just a second, but bloody hell, this view is just sensational. We live in a very flat area and being able to get just that little bit higher, you can see so much further. Really, really cool. So we made it to the top as if we weren't going to, it's not that bloody high. This here, can you see that? That's the, that's the trig point, the trigonometry point that marks the highest point on the hill. And in true Aussie outback fashion, that thing's been shot to pieces by somebody. I don't know where they would have shot it from, maybe over this way. Mind you, the bullet's coming through this way. So I don't know, because it kind of drops off over there. So it's, it might be a really long shot. And if that's the case, the grouping's pretty tight. They're a pretty good shot, whoever it is. So out of all the lenses that, that Reflex have sent me, the wide angle, the wide angle pro is the only one that I kind of go, is it worth getting or not? If you do a lot of what I do here on this channel with low light photography, as in Milky Way photography, astrophotography, uh, light trails, that sort of stuff, absolutely 100% of the time, yes, it's absolutely worth getting. If you're not somebody who does that, I'm going to say the wide on the camera probably does a good enough job all on its own. In fact, right now, while I'm speaking to you guys, I've got um, the camera sitting over there doing a long exposure with the wide angle lens, uh, a little bit of cloud cover, so we might get some good, uh, good, good photo there. But if you're not doing either of those sorts of things, it's probably not worth getting that. I've done a five minute long exposure. It's nice and sharp, it's nice and crisp and sharp. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of clouds out there that are going to capture that movement, but the ones that are out there, well, it's, it's blurred them really well. So it does work and it does keep it nice and sharp. So if you've got the need for that long exposure, you've got the need for low light photography, this, this is a goer. What about the fisheye? With the fisheye lens, it's really subjective if you like it or not. It's very much a personal opinion. opinion. Um, where I live here, like you can see a long way. Um, out there behind me there, just about there, you see a little pyramid looking hill. You'd never know what that's named. It's very, very creatively named. It's called Pyramid Hill. Um, but we can see a bloody long way here. And the wide angle lens on the camera is good, but putting a fisheye on here is, it's next level. There's a couple of things to remember. One, you've got to focus it manually. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And two, when you're as high as I am here, you want to try and, you're going to break that rule of thirds with the horizon. I'm going to try and keep that horizon in the center of the frame because if we don't, it'll bulge out just like an action camera. So this is the camera app and you can see there as I move it up and down, what happens with that horizon. And well, that's just quite frankly, that's just not good enough. Um, so I'll put that in the center of the, of the uh, frame. I'll get rid of that long exposure. I'm gonna turn on the focus peaking. That's the button down the bottom there. Now, if I move that focus, you'll see what happens with the green. See, it's, it's now blurry and it might look like it's nice and sharp there now, but it's not quite. The more green I get in this frame, the more is going to be in focus. And that's quite good there. The downside of that photo is that my leg shadow is in there. So I might just swing around this way and I'll take the same photo out this way. Suicide rock there on the left hand side, put the horizon on the center, take another shot. And that's the good thing with the fisheye lens. You can get really, really, really wide angle views there. Um, for astrophotography, <laughs> it's even better. Out in stormy weather, I might have the blues, but nothing ever stopped me. I'm dusting off.
off my shoe. The last thing that we've got to shoot with is the long range macro. The shallow depth of field of the macro is really impressive. So you can take it vertically straight down. I'm gonna take a photo of these rocks here. Take it vertically straight down and everything will be nicely in focus. Or we can put it on an angle and because we've got that focus peaking turn on this app, you can see what's in focus and you can get some really nice depth of field in these photos. Here's this focus peaking that I'm talking about. So we can go, say this stick that's just here, and I can move the focus point along just by moving the camera forwards and backwards, or just maybe on the side, just like that, and get more of that, yeah, maybe like that, and get that in the shot. But you see, everything that's not green will be a little bit blurry. Alternatively, I can go straight down at something that's not quite flat. We'll try here where this moss is. There you go, everything's nice and green. I'll get a photo of that. And everything in this photo will be dead set, crisp and sharp, all the way to the edges. So that's kind of cool. No now I know you're asking about these macro lenses and why on earth would we use a macro lens when the, you know, the iPhone 13 Pros, they have macro in them. Well, I think it, you've got to think of it like this. If you're looking to get into macro photography, a good way to put your toe in the water is to use macro photography mode on your iPhone. And it does a reasonably good job. But you're going to start noticing things. The, more, the better you get with these things, the more you're going to notice things that are not that good. And one of those things with the iPhone is that around the edges on that macro photo, it's a bit blurry. So you're going to get to a point where you say, well, that's not good enough. I want to do something much more crisp and sharp. And that's where you, screw on lenses like these come into play. All right, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you something. There's a competition running at the moment and you can win all of these lenses, every single one of them. You've got to get over there to Instagram or Facebook. You've got to tag Reflex with these. You've got to hashtag with this one as well and put it in your stories on either of those platforms. You've got one week to get this done. Now the photo that you need to take has got to be a long exposure photo. So go over there to the App Store, download Reflex Pro Camera app, that's free purchase the long exposure uh, application that goes into that, the in-app purchase, and you can do some amazing photos. Go back and have a look at that video that I've done. I'm going to show you how to do all that and enter into that competition. Like all of these lenses, they're like four or 500 bucks worth of lenses for all of them. Also, if you are one of the channel members, you've hit that join button down the bottom there and become a member. I've got to get another benefit here for you. You not only do you get all of my presets for free over there at shaymoston.com, you're also going to get 10% off all of these reflex lenses. So that's a significant saving if you are one of those guys. So head over there, join my channel, and you're gonna get those discounts as well. That's it for today, guys. I'm gonna to catch you later. Definitely worth getting these lenses. What do you think of them? I'd love to know. See you later.